Okay. Um, I thought I'd go, go over this really quickly. Um, depending on where you're seeing this, you may or may not have seen my last video on, on this topic, but basically this topic is emulating integers with booleans. Um, and my last method used booleans and some logic to manipulate an integer locally to your layer. Um, and it works. Um, however, I feel it's not, uh, completely indicative of good performance, um, as it, that system doesn't sync over the network. So I decided to sit down and make a method that does sync over the network that works a little differently. Um, so I'm not going to show you how to set it up, but I'm going to explain how it works. Um, basically on this avatar, I have three different performance options for the skirt. I have no physics at all. I have cloth physics and then I have dynamic bones. And with this system, because those events are all mutually exclusive, meaning they can only happen like they, uh, only one of the states can be active at once. Like you can't have dynamics and cloth on. I mean, you could, if you wanted to, but you know, that obviously doesn't make any sense. Um, and then, you know, you can't have no physics and cloth on at the same time. So mutually exclusive events just mean two things can't happen or three things in this case can't happen at the same time. So because of this, normally you'd use an integer and set, you know, no cloth to be two, uh, cloth to be one cause that, or cloth to be zero. Cause that's my default state. And, um, and then dynamic bonus one. So normally you do it that way with integers and that's fine. There's no issue doing that. It's just not optimal. Um, because this avatar at least. Um, you know, I have all of these variables and, you know, all of these, and even though I have all of these, it's still only taking up 86 because I've done this method in a couple different places. Um, but anyway, to get into it, this method, it's pretty simple. Um, once you get it down, um, and it scales, so don't do it if you have more than seven, because if you have more than seven, then integer uses eight and there's no point in doing this. It's overcomplicated. And then anything over eight, it's actually a waste of memory. Um, but, uh, basically you set up your normal toggles like this, right? Your cloth dynamic bones and no dynamic bones. This layer is standard for it's standard the way you think it would be for, uh, you know, your integer setup would be zero, one, and two, right? But instead, we're using booleans, so we do skirt cloth is true, skirt dynamics is true, and no dynamics is skirt no dynamics is true, right? So that makes sense enough. That's just simple logic. Um, now, this method is different than the last one in that it doesn't use buttons like the last one does. It actually uses toggles, and you can see on the driver section that there is a, a toggle, if you will, that forces your initial state, um, your entry state to be true whenever all of your other states are off, right? So basically what this does is say I toggle, you know, dynamic bones on, um, that's going to toggle cloth and, and, or rather I disable all dynamics, right? That's going to toggle off cloth and toggle off the dynamic bones, right? But say I toggle off dynamics, right? That would mean at least visually on your your layer, like, or rather your menu, that every single state on your menu would be off. Um, and let me just pop over to show you what I mean. So I'm just going to show you with a different menu. Um, you can pretend like, uh, you know, this is my dynamic bones option and this is my cloth option, right? So if I turn skirt on, right, it's going to turn, you know, the NSFW off, right? Um, and Basically, if I were to turn the skirt off, you can see that now there's no default state. We're kind of in limbo, um, if that makes sense. Um, and this is what we try to avoid um, in, in emulating integers with Booleans. If you just use straight Booleans, you would have no default state and, you know, things would break. Uh, at least things wouldn't happen as you want them to if you're emulating an integer, because an integer has to be at one state, right? So an example of an integer being in one state is, I guess we could do here, right? So integer is only in one state here. Um, and if I turn off the tank top, it's going to default back to the sweater, right? Because that's how integers work. This integer is set to be zero when the sweater is on and this is one. So whenever I toggle it off, it's going to automatically toggle the sweater. So now if I switch to the working layer with, uh, what do you call it <laughs> with integer uh, emulation? Um, I go to, um, oh, my brain died. I forgot where I put it. 
oh yeah, performance. So if I go here and I try to toggle cloth off, it's not going to let me. And if I toggle dynamic bones on and then I toggle it off, it's going to default back to cloth. And to prove that this is in fact using booleans, you can scroll down to where it says shirt, no dynamics, skirt dynamic bones and skirt cloth on the left there. Those are all booleans. So if I go and turn cloth on, it's going to see it's going to toggle dynamics off and cloth on, right? And then when I toggle the cloth off, you're going to see it's going to try to toggle it off. Um, you can see it turning red there for a second and then turning straight back. That's exactly what we wanted to do. And then when you go to dynamic bones, it's going to toggle it off. And then we toggle off dynamic bones, it's going to force skirt cloth to be true because everything is false. So I'm going to go ahead and explain exactly how to do that in Unity. Okay, so we're back into Unity. Um, basically, this is pretty self-explanatory, to be honest. So you have cloth, no dynamics, and dynamic bones. So the logic for this is skirt cloth is true. The logic for this one is skirt no dynamics is true. And the logic for this one is skirt dynamics is true. So this is the exact same logic, literally copy-pasted from this here. Exact same logic, no difference. Um, the difference besides the logic side, so the difference on the animation blocks, is that all of these are placeholder animations that don't do anything, right? All of these animations serve is only to serve as a parameter driver. So when you have cloth on, it uses the parameter driver to set no dynamics and dynamic bones to be off, right? Then no dynamics turns cloth off and dynamic bones off. Dynamic bones turns no dynamics off and skirt cloth off, right? That makes enough sense. But now we want to have the reset state because right now we have the three, the three checks, the true for each of the states. And... Like I showed a second ago, whenever I toggle everything off, I want it to force cloth on. That's exactly what this does. And all this does is check if every single one is false. And then it goes here and sets your default state. In my case, it's cloth to true. That's how the entire system works. It's network synced, which means that uh, late joiners will see it because you're forcing a parameter to be true that's active in your parameter list that's synced across the network. So this is kind of how to do it. Um, again, this is uh, kind of a more intermediate idea, um, but the way that I have it set up, pretty self-explanatory, pretty easy. I think anybody can emulate this, um, considering the explanation. So, if you have any questions about it, though, just shoot me a DM, no problem. I'll answer it if I can. Um, all right. Hopefully that helps.